Holy crap, it's StarCraft 2! Can you believe it? I actually have StarCraft 2! I actually spent a hundred bucks on StarCraft 2! Yep, I got it. What in the world with, with those black bars on the sides? <sighs> it's good to know the production values haven't changed. StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm has been out for at least a couple of months now, but uh, I've been holding out for this collector's edition because, well, I'm an idiot. Heart of the Swarm takes place a couple of months after Wings of Liberty ends, with Kerrigan's transformation back to her human self, well, human-ish. She's tested to figure out the extent of her control of the Zerg in general, and after putting on a somewhat destructive display, she and Jim Raynor attempt to escape from Dominion capture. Raynor is seemingly killed in an attack, and Kerrigan, filled with rage, goes on her quest for revenge. Along the way, she meets up with old associates, forms alliances with new ones, and once again becomes the Queen of Blades. I'll save the story yucks and shenanigans for later. I mean, after all, first and foremost, it's the gameplay I'm interested in. The game is still very textbook StarCraft, although the old rock-paper-scissors formula doesn't seem to be as dominant as it used to be. Not every unit feels like it has a use, but at least they're interesting. All the units are back from Wings of Liberty, and now in the single player you get to create all the chaos that annoyed the hell out of you two years ago. I found myself using Zerglings a lot more compared to the old teams I had made in older games. The missions are fun and varied, and even though a lot of them are timed, you can figure out the patterns relatively easily. This can challenge any player to up their game, and their micro speed, to more effectively and efficiently complete all the objectives. Replacing the Armory and Science Laboratory from Wings of Liberty are Kerrigan's Power Resource page, for lack of a better name, and the Evolution Pit, run by this funky-looking thing here, Abathur. Abathur is actually the thing responsible for initially transforming Kerrigan into the Queen of Blades, and will be responsible for adding one of three mutation powers and an evolution strain to each unit. Powers can be changed at will, while the evolutions are much like tech trees in Wings of Liberty, as you can't switch them after you choose one. Kerrigan can also change her powers at will, and has multiple things she can do in effect. She can change her extra power layout, and her overall control of the swarm can allow things like regenerate zerglings at the main hatchery. They also took out the bar and that useless mercenary hiring thing, having put all the main characters to talk to in one place, save for Abathur. Finding out the story of how Kerrigan controlled the swarm in the first place is fun to find out from advisors such as Isha and Zagura, and while the primal zerg thing was kinda odd. It was great to see the link between Heart of the Swarm and Brood War with the return of Alexei Stukov, former Vice Admiral to the United Earth Directorate, now infested Terran. I also noticed that the Evolution Pit brought back a lot of references from StarCraft and Brood War, for instance, the Lurkers, and the original idea of what the Sunken Colony was. But I really don't think Heart of the Swarm is original in its own right. Once again, I have to call the writing into question. As the game has been out for two months, I have to say that they really could have explored other angles instead of Kerrigan turning back into the Queen of Blades. 
While it would have been difficult to have Kerrigan interact with the Zerg without the transformation, it would have been interesting to see her having to balance her time with Jim Raynor and the Hyperion, as well as her interaction with her former Swarm. I would have also liked to have seen more time with Zeratul instead of having him just show up just to lead the Zerg to one place. Hell, Nova shows up, and that would have been interesting to explore a female ghost showdown. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been so obvious as to where they got their own freaking story from. Why do I keep getting these things? Also, the single player, at least on normal difficulty, is a bit... easy. I actually ran through the game with very few problems, and that's with my bad micro skills. Maybe it's also that I am a veteran player, rather than just some guy who's picked up an RTS for the first time, but still, I get the suspicion that the real challenge is on the multiplayer, which is a very scary place for me. And you know, I could continue on and complain about the difficulty of the game, and how the story is written badly, and the lack of units. <laughs> I... I, I just don't care. I don't. I don't. I don't know to how to explain it, and I'm not going to, but for some reason, anytime I play StarCraft, I'm always going to be visiting an old friend of mine. I'm going to end up with this stupid grin on my face, no matter what I say about it. It's an old friend, and I'm always going to love playing this series with an unbridled passion. But with that said... It's been over six months since I've asked a particular question. And now I know it's on your minds because, well, I finally added the logo to the frickin' show. Is StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm worth your cash? Objectively speaking, or, well, as best I can, there are three price points, 40 60 and $80. 40 will net you either a digital or physical copy of the game, while 60 will get you a digital deluxe edition, and 80, well, gets you the big box of goodies. Much like Diablo 3, fans of the series already have what they want, but the way it works is a little different. Don't let the term expansion pack fool you. It's actually the full game, but you will have to buy a key for Wings of Liberty if you've never gotten any StarCraft 2 game outside of Heart of the Swarm. Thankfully, that's only 20 bucks, so you'd be paying, in standard editions, the full price of a current console generation game. You still get the excellent yet insane multiplayer and the arcade games, which use the engine for, shall we say, wacky purposes. The extra editions are only worth it if you're a die-hard fan, so I wouldn't go for those if you're trying to save money. With all that objectivity out of the way, I love this game, and you can't tear me away from it. Unlike Diablo, where I just play the game once and I'm sort of done with it, or Warcraft, where they completely change the genre on me and alienate me because of it, StarCraft is always rooted in my soul. The games I played in 1999 and 2000, end on end during my college years, will always be a part of me. You could copy a game from the past, or in terms of the story, or not innovate any strategies for the last five to ten years. I'm stupid. I am always going to play this stuff. Sure, it's not perfect, but what game ever is? If I were to go talk to Blizzard about my experiences with Heart of the Swarm, you know what I'd say? I'd say it was my pleasure. Always was.